Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is the next episode of our series building the Epic Store game UI. Uh, so this is the part that will basically finish uh, our uh, authentication and authorization part. Uh, finally, we should be able to register our user. Uh, and to do that, we actually need to do some changes in the backend because uh, I know if you remember, we did some changes in the register form. And right now, checking the register form input, this takes email, country code, name, surname, display name, subscribe newsletter, boolean value, and terms accepted uh, value. Um, I don't really care for sending this to the backend, uh, but we should definitely send the rest of that information. And to do that, we need to go to our entity in the backend and extend it a little bit. So we need to add a few problems here. We need to add text and unique. And this is going to be um, display name. Um, then we need a uh, column. It's going to be text for the uh, surname. And then we need the column text for uh, country code. And column is going to be Boolean for the subscribe to newsletter value and as we do that we see a few errors here uh, yeah so uh, what we have configured uh, currently here is the mm, synchronization and this can be found in uh, let me see database module we have synchronized set to true this means that whenever we change the structure of one of our entity uh, what will happen uh, what our type rm will try to do is to push the new structure to the database but then we mentioned that user entity cannot be uh, empty well display name cannot, cannot be empty and right now if we go to our pg admin and select stuff from uh, the user we can see that there is a user which structure does not match current entity and we can easily take care of that. We can just delete that and uh, save data changes. Okay, so now there is no data currently in the uh, database that would block that synchronization, that, that difference and that update. So let's try running that again. Okay, and now Probably, maybe, if we were to, uh, how do you, uh, not here, here, get the rows, yeah, now you can see that our structure was properly updated because there was no data that was desynchronized from the point of view of the entity. Okay, uh, with that done, uh, let's move along. Uh, I believe the one thing we should also change is, <coughs> sorry, is the uh, user create DTO, right? Because 
this this isn't correct at all so what we should do here basically is to also extra extend the uh, create user DTO to match the values in our forms but also this is the place where we can add the uh, validation uh, in the uh, backend so to do that we need a few things here um, first thing is to install class validator right and if you're interested in that you can just check the class validator um, library that we'll be using uh, but that's not going to be enough we also need to inform nest.js that we'd like to use the class validator uh, but we'll do that in a minute let's start with the our dto uh, the data transfer object so for the email it's going to be rather simple we can use is email decorator uh, for the password uh, we can use is string uh, is not uh, come on is string and then oh that should be I believe uppercased and then is empty shouldn't be empty you can also specify the minimum value here so this is uh, min length say so set it to seven um, next then is boolean is boolean and this is for the subscribe to newsletter string oh boolean of course um then what else the surname uh, is string uh, is not empty um, we don't need the columns These are decorators after all uh, surname is a string then is string is not empty um, for this play name okay um, and I believe country code is string is not empty uh, country code is a string okay now we already have some problems in the auth controller and this is great because the typescript is informing uh, us about that so let's see uh, register okay we can change that we don't need to select the um, properties from the values based on key we can just get everything in one piece so you can get rid of that and then say that this is um all of the body should be in registra registration data this is going to be create user to and we'll pass that here okay and that should be correct um just to have 
an error somewhere. It's like it's stacked, so sometimes you have to restart that. And still, uh, our service sort for that. So let's see. Um, now we can just get registration data here. Uh, here we can pass registration data password and to create I believe what we should pass is password should be set to hash password uh, and first let's split registration data and then overwrite the password to be hashed password if i wouldn't do this overwrite here then the password that we send to the database would be the plain text password and you don't want that like never okay so that that looks good uh, one thing though i believe that we need is to somehow inform um that we want to use the uh, validation service and go to nest js and documentation let me see class validator yeah we need to add a pipe for that and this is going to be class transformer so let's add that Uh, and we need a validation pipe. Um, what do we now? Uh, no, we can use that globally. So uh, this is rather interesting because you can. Um, add that validation pipe to given controller or you can use that globally uh, let's see yeah we can add that globally or do we want yeah we'll use the basically we'll use the class transform and class validator um, for each of our details and there will be a few of these so let's just go to main ts and here uh, let's use global pipes and that's going to be new validation pipe okay that that should basically handle what we need for our backend so that's good and we're, we're doing good the timing here so now to our um we can close that to our front end register form and we'll definitely need stuff like of rp we're not doing anything with login yet but we can definitely write uh, our uh, register request here so let's see uh, first things first I'm gonna take the register form input and pass it here uh, although you can always take the interfa interfaces and put them at the bottom because once you mm, define them you will rarely, rarely need to check them or modify them so you can start looking at the functions which are basically always most more important than the interfaces 
so uh, register right we need asynchronous function um that we will take let's call this register input it's going to be register form input and what we need to do is um, perform the request. So uh, it's going to be out register with the form input. Uh, register input, sorry. And oh, okay, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, we have an object here, so it's going to be URL set to out. Oh register this is our endpoint and then data is register input uh, the question is to import that the question is what is going to be the answer to that so let's go to the controller uh, and of service and the answer is of type of user. So basically the same as login response for now. So let's rename that to user out response. Uh, this is fine. And let's give the types here. Okay. So then going to register form, we have to change our own submit. And write our mutation, right? Uh, yeah, so we'll use mutation. Mutation is going to be register. Um, and for now, on success, registered. Okay, we'll also have to handle our errors somehow. Uh, register user so let's see uh, register user with data um, this is looking good so let's try that this is our register so let's Choose a country, provide like Boytech XXX, display name XXX, where it can be like whatever. Uh, password can be test one, two, three, four. Um, do not subscribe to the newsletter. Let's check our network. And oh, of course, we need to confirm that. And bad request password must be empty. That's not correct. Uh, meaning there's something wrong with our DTO. Password is. Mm, is not empty okay and 
checking that looks like we're serving oh we're sending terms accepted we're not sending subscribe to newsletter so that's interesting um to default to false then so um oh we're not using that at all uh ch -ch 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 -ch. i don't know whether we will build a newsletter i don't believe so so we need to handle it somehow um okay that's that's fine just add this default value is false name is subscribe to newsletter Oh, we have to. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, 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 that's that's actually not what I wanted. We have to wrap it in a controller. Controller. Um, render. Render. Uh, this should be then end of our controller. And uh, then there's the function unpacking field ref and the rest. Uh, then there's that and that and that and that. Okay. Now we need default value that falls. Uh, this should be gone. The name. Um, this is fine. We spread the rest. We Pass the input ref. Uh, we set the error. It's going to be errors. Subscribe to newsletter. Helper text is going to be. This is just the same as below. Um, we don't need typography. The rest is good. I believe okay or is it counts with property control of new um yes it's, 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 that's actually true okay try this again Um, this doesn't matter right now. Let's see. And let's sign up. Password must be at least six characters. Okay, one, two, three. And we have user created so that's fine but um that's cool but now we have to handle the errors right because we already said that the email and the uh the email and the where is it it's in the entity we said that the email and display name have to be has to be unique okay so let's try this again and this should return email taken 
Uh, and this is kind of problematic because what we should actually do, I believe, is to somehow display the message, have the message, have the error in a way that allows us to identify the field that given given um, error is bound to. So actually, actually let's do, let's change that to be nine because this should trigger first. This error is coming from the database. This er error is coming from the validation and the validation of the TTO should happen before the validation of the data integrity in the database. So if I try to register this again with the password shorter to nine, okay. I'm getting this. Mm. Can we make the class validator so that it responds with the field? We can add the messages. It's cool. Mm, yeah. Property. That would be great to have. Conditional validation. Because what we need right here is the information about the field. Um, the message is good, but we could go and just display one message here, the first error that we encounter. That would be good enough, right? But I would rather see it bound to the to given field. Let's see. Last validator hmm. field. Um, let's see. Property. Uh, let's see. Um, whitelist, forbidden, not whitelist, or forbidden, no disable error messages, exception factory, dismiss default, validation target. Okay. Uh, let's see. Going to the main. Uh, this should take options. Uh, validation error. Target. True. Let's try this again. Um, like nothing really. I have to start it again. Uh, validation error target. Let's see. Uh, the validation, validate function option access. Okay. The validate method returns an array of validation errors. Target property. Yeah, where is my property information? that haven't passed validation. 
let's see property um cool Let's see. A class validator property. Okay, to be honest, I'm not really sure how to achieve that. So let me figure it out. Okay, so this can be achieved by the use of exception factory added as an option to validation pipe. And in that case, we're getting the property, right? So see how we can use it here. Um, let's see. There is on success, on error. Let's see this error here. I believe this is should be the same, yeah, as here, but it will be a little bit more complicated. So we have to check for error response status equal to. that and then it's going to live in error response data i believe let's see that um status code um it's a message Um, register form T six sixty three. Okay, so it's going to be error array and it's available as error error response data message. Um, okay, and then we can use this because there's a form state and we can use, let's see, set error, okay. Um, What's the API for that? Let's see. Set error. Um, there's a name. There's an error. 
So let's see. Uh, we have to basically do for each error array for each oh for each error it doesn't help that we don't don't have the yeah it, it has a no type we can fix this a little bit later uh set error and there is error uh, let me check property um let's see for errors we're using error name and there's a message um what is the options error options oh there's a message okay cool uh, so the message should be the value of the constraint. So um, there is error constraints. And this is an object and we need values of that object we take the first one um, okay we, we would have to fix the typing but let's see whether that works at all um, okay so let's try this again. Uh, country doesn't matter. Name doesn't matter. Explain name can be important here. Uh, email does matter. Password can be like. I understand. Okay, let's see what happens now. Okay, and this, this is good because this error is actually coming from the API. So that's good. So let's extend that. Let's try this again. We have another, yeah, another uh, email taken. And this to use the same api we would have to go to the with this user service um our oh, service sorry our oh, service register and there's email taken so we would have to build something different here. So what we're using here is the message property and constraints. Um, so let's see. So where is it? Let's have this on the side. So then this should be an object with a message with the property of email uh, and then it should have constraints unique email already taken let's see whether that works because what we have to do here is to match the structure 
of the error from the database with the structure of the error from class validator so that in the front end we can just use well one code to check for errors uh, so let's see this now and there's message with constraints and this should be good right so why is it not working uh let's see oh because it should be an array okay so this should be um and actually this should be an array of objects um, and you don't like me because this is wrong okay let's try now works okay so yeah this is this is how we can handle that issue let's change that uh, we should also get another error this time um, come on yeah because uh, even though we change the email what is not unique here is the uh, let me show you is the um, display name which we um, mentioned should also be unique like right here now we have to distinguish somehow um, and we can do it rather easily actually thankfully so let's just do that um let's be smart about it um let's say unique property is actually i believe somewhere here there's a detail and we can check for email if it does include email then the property property is an email else it will be display uh, name okay and then we can just use the property unique property here and unique property here okay let's check for that okay great and now if I change this to be unique and make this not unique the email already taken error pops up so this is great uh what we should check then is where we can actually sign in with the account that we created so mm, this was something like this i believe and then the password was and not this maybe this yeah and here we have set cookie and then in application cookies uh, it's not visible but 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 after the login we can check that again uh, this is going to out API after the login 
uh, we can check whether we are doing this correctly uh, by uh, trying to perform another call to a different endpoint so after the login try and hit i don't really care for example we should have collections endpoint yeah okay so let's try that so that is the user we created with the registrar form i am able to log in let's see whether we can authorize properly and did i save it Try that again. So I'm doing the login and sir. Log in. Oh, my stupid or what? Try that again. Logged in. Why there's no other call? Should be yet another call performed. Um, okay, so unauthorized, meaning that for any reason, the cookie is not being set properly. Okay, but why? Let's see. There is set cookie. Hmm. But it's not being set. let's see it's going to be get cookie to jwt token have http only authentication path exit oh i know i believe we need the secure key here let's try that again So nothing. Um, it's secure, but it's not being set. Authentication. Oh, yeah, I know what. You have to provide the domain for the cookie, and for now, it's going to be. Uh, localhost since that's the domain for which we'd like to set the cookie let's try that again sorry okay so after a little bit of investigation i have found the issue first thing that we have to do is to actually add with credentials and set it to true in api in access and then go to our main.ts and here add credentials and set it to true 
And with that, I hope we we get the cookie here, but what's more important, the cookie is being set properly in the browser. So yeah, that, that was the part that we were missing. So basically now what you can do is register and login with our user created. Uh, what we have to do actually is, well, a little bit more complicated, uh, I think. Um, we could enhance a little bit our authorization process. Two things that are missing is um, email validation, like sending the email with the confirmation link. That's one thing. Um, or that's one thing we could do, do, or after registration, we could automatically log in the user. That's another thing that we could consider. Maybe we'll add it, but uh, we're, I'm not gonna bother with this right now. Uh, I would like to finally move forward with this. So basically after the proper login, we should navigate user to home. Uh, so let's see how we can do that. Login form. We also have to use, I believe, navigate. Yeah, we, we're not using this. So on success, use navigate. Um, this should come from next right let's see next js navigation uh client side navigation uh, okay cool Pages, yeah, link component. That's one thing I would like to use um, something more, something like uh, ch -ch 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 something like programmatical routing, mm, router push. Use router. Dynamic segments. Function. URL. Okay. So basically, we're doing use router. Uh, did we? No, we didn't use that before. So use router. Here we should be able to find push. Maybe we could use replace. Doesn't matter. Push it to home. Okay, let's try that. Password. And the school. No, never like, don't do this. Okay, so yeah. So we can navigate after being logged in and i believe we will pick up from here in the next episode um next week i'm on holiday so i won't be recording so i guess i'll see you guys after my very welcomed holidays yeah i've been waiting for that whole year so i'll see you then goodbye and see you